Okay, it's David Rizza from Rogers Gardens and thank you for joining me today. And today we're gonna to talk about June in the garden. So even though we've had some pretty gloomy weather, so June gloom is pretty much setting in. I think by, by the end of the month, we should start warming up because the sun's starting to break more in the afternoon and that's when you can see it changing a little bit. But today I'm gonna to go through everything to plant in June. Um, and your and the questions wait until the end to a ask any questions and um, I'm gonna start into it so I'm gonna go over the veggies gonna go over some of the perennials and there's a lot of stuff that we're getting in right now that I'm gonna talk about so okay so we're gonna start it off so a lot of people think right now and, and year year in and year out sometimes weather is different weather patterns are different but the one thing is everybody keeps on asking me is it too late for tomatoes right now I'm like, we've been so cool that I just put my garden in a week ago. So I still will plant tomatoes. I still will plant peppers because the hotter we get or the war more warmer we get, they're going to take off and do better. So a lot of people think it's too late. It's too late. But like now our summers are a little later. Our spring is later. So that's why we warm up a little bit later. So I'm still planting. You might have a hard time finding some heirloom tomatoes right now, but I got in some little Czechoslovakian heirlooms, stupiches are good, little potato leaf heirlooms, small tomatoes. Um, mortgage lifter is another good one that I had somewhere. Oh, this is better boy. That's just one of the hybrids. But uh, I don't think I brought the other ones up. But anyway, um, you wanna hunt down the varieties. I still will do hybrids. I'll do Roma and then I'll do the, the heirloom summers down there for my sauces or my salsas. But don't wait to get them in. If you find them, plant them. Don't sit on them. That's the main thing about June is try to get stuff in because we'll get warmer as the month, as we go farther into June. So I still do my tomatoes. And a lot of times I didn't really, I didn't really bring any of them up that were in bloom, but if the plants are still small, pinch out the flowers until the plants get big. I won't let them set their flowers until they're a good four or five feet tall. So I'll pinch all those flowers off because I want more energy going into the plant, not into them setting because if they set a fruit, they're not going to grow anymore. So pinch those flowers off and let them grow. Um, skirt up the leaves a little bit so they have better air movement um, under the leaves, you know, because you don't want fungal problems like early blight, late blight and stuff like that. So watering is crucial too. You want to make sure that you're even watering them. Don't keep them too wet. So plant them see them in the nurseries if you see any heirlooms like cherokee purples black crims any of those grab them because you might not find them as much this time of year okay so that's with the tomatoes you can still plant them we're just in a cooler um year so still put them in still plant them uh peppers are the same way um i grabbed this is a little variety called bikino which is a little tiny white pepper that's really hot so that's a good one but I'll do shishitos, I'll do cayennes, jalapenos. Um, we've had a hard time getting serranos. And what I'll tell you, if you can't find plants, buy the seeds and plant the seeds and don't wait. Because a lot of times people will try to hunt down like serranos. And we haven't had serranos in probably about a month, month and a half. Plant the seeds, but don't wait. You know, get a little container, put three or four seeds in each container, let them sprout. Wait three weeks and put them in the ground. So that's peppers so plant them right now um with with them you want to always go a higher phosphorus fertilizer so make sure you you're 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 feeding them they're heavy feeders so that's with peppers um you're really going into the warmer i always consider this time of year going into the summer vegetables because we're really starting to wind out of lettuces you can still do near the coast but it's going to start getting hot arugula it's going to start getting too hot a lot of those like leafy greens like it when it's in the 50s 60s and 40s at night 50s but now we're starting to warm up so i tend to start leaning more towards the summer vegetables so like all the zucchinis like you have your your um the labels buried let me see if i can get the label <laughs> this is an italian variety that i like for um squash it's called coco zelli this is a good one the skin's really thin on it so good one to plant um you got some of the, um, these are the mixed, these are mixed. So these are three different varieties of zucchini in here. But one thing I'll show you is when you have a variegated leaf, they don't get powdery mildew. So when you see the leaf that's variegated on, on the squash, they won't get mildew. So they're, they're actually mildew resistant. So that's a good one. That's called summer sunrise mix. So it has a gold, 
a lighter gray and then a green. So it's three different zucchinis in here. So it's more of a mix. So that's a good one to grab. Um, you got the eight ball, which is like a French zucchini. That's a good one. Get those. Um, I think I, I don't know where I brought, I thought I brought them up. Did I bring, oh yeah, pumpkins. So now, no, that's not a pumpkin. <laughs> I don't know what I did with the pumpkins, but now is the time to do the pumpkins. So if you can't find them again, if you can't find the plants, do the seeds because now's the time you want to start uh, planting the bigger pumpkins like the jack-o'-lanterns, um, the cinderellas. This is a good eating pumpkin. This is a solid flesh all the way through, so it's not a carving. So look at what you're going to use them for. Carving pumpkin, eating pumpkin. So a different variety. Um, this is the one that holds the world record, uh, Dill's Atlantic Giant. These are up to, I think the world record's up to about 1,600, 2,000 pounds now. So big pumpkin. But the one thing with the bigger pumpkins is you really got to give them room. They'll sort of take over your garden. So when you're thinking about them, um, look at the space because some of the bigger varieties will take over everything. So that's so put your pumpkins in right now. Plant seeds because even if you plant the seeds, they're going to germinate in 7 to 10 days and then they'll start taking off. So pumpkins are good right now. Um, what else we got? Um, I'm doing a lot of beans too. So now it's bean season. So no more peas. Peas, it's time, it's gonna start warming up. So like the Kentucky Wonder uh, pole beans are good. Um, I brought up seeds, um, where the seeds go? Oh, and this is a good one provider, which is, a, this one is a bush bean. Yeah, this is a bush bean. So if you do your bush beans, just put them on the border behind your strawberries and they'll produce just as much as the climbers. So that's one thing is I do a lot of bush beans and I do like some of the French filet beans too. Like this is called Emery Rites and Emery Rites are really skinny uh, filet bean, French hard cocks. So these are good to plant right now. So definitely um, get into your summer stuff, like your eggplant you can do right now. Um, sunflowers, you know, like I brought up, if you, again, if you can't find the sunflowers, plant the seeds. This is the one you're gonna harvest the um, sunflower seeds off of called mammoth. So there's different varieties, there's ornamental and there is edible. This is the one that you're gonna do for the sunflower seeds. So that's one mammoth. So mammoth is a good one. Um, corn, you're planting your corn right now. So corn is a heavy feeder. This is just yellow corn. Um, when you do plant corn, I'll take, I'll take two of them out. You want to plant them in blocks because that's how they pollinate. So you put them about 12 to 14 inches apart in a box pattern. So one here, one here, and then one here, one here. So square pattern because if you put them too close, these leaves will cover the silks of the corn and then you won't get um, you won't get coverage on the corn. You'll have a you'll have an ear of corn with no no kernels on it. So that's important. Plant them in a, back, a box pattern and fertilize them really good. I'll go through and I use the I use the all purpose. One of my favorite fertilizers. I mean, we sell so many different fertilizers, but this is one of my favorite fertilizers. I use this on fruit trees. I use this on vegetables, herbs. I use it on everything. So I usually will buy like a 25 pound bag and just feed everything with it. So this is my favorite. It's a 462, so four nitrogen, six phosphorus, and two potassium. So with fruiting plants, you always wanna make sure that that number in the middle is higher. That phosphorus has to be higher. And that's usually from fish bone meal. So that's important with that. So fertilize everything with that. So um, with the vegetables, like I was saying, um, summer, think of summer stuff, because. Even though we're cool right now, we're gonna warm up cucumbers too. I'm sort of low on cucumbers right now, but you can do your Persian cucumbers, your straight eights, market moors. So plant. June is the month to get going on the summer vegetables. That's important. So um, that's for the summer veggies. Um, strawberries, it's getting a little later for them. Um, they're starting to throw their runners. Um, they're not, you, you wanna get strawberries in early. Um, what I would do with this one though is I would cut all these runners and cut the leaves back and plan up to see if I can get another set of fruiting because this one's always throwing runners and it might not fruit anymore. So that's one thing with strawberries, you wanna pluck those runners and cut them back to uh, make sure that they fruit because sometimes if they're throwing runners right now, they might not fruit till next year. So that's with strawberries. Um, and so with um, herbs, so now's the season to really start getting into your herbs like we have a huge amount of, of herbs right now so basil like the sweet basil it's good right now 
Um, your your uh, pesto basils are good to plant right now. Basils want really fast drainage and, and not too much, not to overwater them. So they want that soil to really drain. So you can put them in pots, you can put them in the ground. Make sure that your herbs get about six hours of sun, but basil, watch them for the snails and slugs a little bit too, because if you see holes in the leaves, snails love basil. Um, there's an organic bait called sluggo. Sluggo is the only, only one that we can use in the vegetable garden. So this isn't, this is, it's non-metalldehyde base. So use it on your pets. It's an iron source. It's to toxic to slugs and snails, but not um, animals and, and not us. So that's a good one. It's a little pellet. So keep on using that. Sometimes I'll sprinkle it down about once a week if they're bad. So basil put in right now, like your Thai, your sweet. Um, we're low on holy basil and some of the other ones. We should get some of that in next week. So now it's basil season. And so parsley. Italian parsley is good right now. Um, it's a biennial, so plant it. Make sure it gets watered. Sometimes I'll put it in the shade of my tomatoes or a fruit tree because sometimes parsley doesn't like it really hot in the afternoon. So that's lemongrass. Lemongrass is a good one. Lemongrass is actually a deterrent for mosquitoes too. So, but the one thing when you when you want to deter them, cut the cut the branches and sort of smash them because. It's the oil is coming out of the leaves that they're, they're, uh, they'll stay away from. So it has to have some oil. They'll pick up those scents. So lemongrass plant right now, regular water, full sun to partial, chamomile. If you guys make tea, this is what you make the tea out of, uh, chamomile tea. They cut the flowers off. So chamomile is good. Um, what else we got? Cilantro. So the one thing with cilantro, cilantro, and there's there's even what did I do with the uh, oh cilantro and dill. So these two don't like it as hot. So what you always do with cilantro and dill, put it in a little bit of shade, keep trimming them to keep on getting them to to grow. Because when it gets hot, sometimes they'll bolt and they'll go to seed quick. So that's why these two are are pretty short lived for um, herbs. So keep on replanting, but keep trimming them. But once they bolt and go to seed. I'll replant them and I'll move on. I'll replant them, new plants, and then, because in the winter time, you can harvest this for a couple months. Summer, it won't last as long, it's too hot. So that's with those two, oregano, your hot and spicy, Greek, uh, Mexican oregano, all of them are really good. They like the heat, so put your oregano in it right now. Lemon verbena, I love lemon verbena. I put this in green tea. So this is my favorite for green tea. I, put, I pick off a couple leaves, Squeeze it, squish them, and then lemon. I love the smell of lemon. So that's my favorite one for a lemon substitute. So love lemon verbena. Green tea, peppermint green tea, my favorite. <laughs> and then the tarragon's starting to come in. We finally got the French tarragon. So that's coming in. Um, the lavenders, now the lavenders are really gonna start blooming now we go into late spring, early summer. Like the little English lavenders, you can put this in in lavender tea drinks and so this is the english which one did i grab oh no this is an intermediate called provence so provence is a really good one so plant your lavenders um your sage so this is your cooking sage always get the skinny leaf or the narrow leaf this is called garden gray but this is the one they make brown butter out of so if you guys like cooking and you use sage get the narrow leaf the skinny leaf garden gray chef's choice there's a couple of them so that's important. Grab those. They're plant, plant now. The herbs like the rosemary. I always do the upright rosemaries for cooking because these carry the highest oil. So Tuscan Blue, Spice Island, Barbecue. They're good varieties for cooking. Um, put them in good sun. Uh, watch them for an insect that's starting to show up called spittle bugs. If spittle bugs are bad, I'll just use like an organic soap or a pyrethrine. I like the Safer products a lot. Safer makes really good products, but I'll use that if the spittle bugs get bad. So punch of rosemary. Um, we did get some chervil. Uh, chervil is hard to get. So if you guys want chervil, we have some right now. We have like, I think about a flat and a half. Lemon balm, punch of lemon balm right now. And I didn't really bring up a lot of thyme, but you can plant thyme right now, like lemon thyme, lime thyme. Your main time for cooking is English time. And so that's the one, if you're cooking a lot with, with time, the dry time is English time. So that's, 
important. Um, you can you can really take off and do the English time. And another one that I forgot to mention um, with the basils, there's a newer basil that I'm starting to grow called Emerald Towers. This is a really good for one for making pestos. So that's one watch for. I don't have the plants right now, but I have the seeds. So Emerald Towers is a good one. And then even with, with like, I'll backtrack a little bit, but with the corn, like the seeds, the honey and pearl. Um, and you, one thing I'll talk on really quick before we move any further, you can't find butternut squash or spaghetti squash, plant the seeds, do the seeds right now. So scallops, I do the seeds, so that's important. Um, so moving on through the herbs, now we're going into the flowers. So let's talk a little bit about flowers. As we go more into summer, we're almost to summer and we're almost out of spring. So we're going to start warming up as we go into this month. So we're seeing a lot of the summer annuals come in. So like you're getting the zinnias, like the zinnias are good right now. Binkas is going to be planted right now. The little um, dianthus. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, yeah. And so let's go through these really quick. So annuals right now. We have a really good one from a seed, State Fair Zinnia. That's a good one right now too. Um, so the annuals right now, keep on planting them, but now is the one, now we're getting the ones like even the Victoria Blue Salvias for shade, we're getting impatient. So now summer annuals are coming in. Um, shifting gears into the perennials. I love talking about perennials. Um, so we're getting some really good perennials in. So we got in some Kabaddi daisies. This is like a burgundy one. This is a good one to plant in your garden. The butterflies love daisies. So butterfly garden, good. I'm getting some nice ivy geraniums. Finally, because we're starting to warm up a little bit, um, you got the bloom flowers, the platy cones that can take partial sun. So those, um, I'm gonna start setting some on the ground because I, I don't have enough room for my other plants. <laughs> so more ivy geraniums. Another favorite of mine are the angelonias. As we go into late May, early June, we're getting the Angelonias, and these will bloom all summer long. So another name for these is Summer Snapdragons. See, they're just barely starting to bloom. So Angelonias are really good. They come in purples, whites, pinks, and they don't get really tall. They'll get about 12 to 15 inches tall, but good one for flowering through the summer, and they love the heat. The hotter it is, the better it is. So those are really good. Um, Nasturzums, so um, we're starting to get the asterisms in. So these are really good for the butterflies. Um, edible flower too. A lot of people don't know this. You can eat these. I put them in salads. So one of the edible flowers we carry. Um, sunflowers too. We're finally getting into, now these are not the edible types. Oh no, I take that back. I lied. <laughs> so this is mammoth. Again, like I was talking the seeds, this is the sunflower. Um, the one that you eat for the sunflower seeds. And then this is an ornamental this uh, mixture of, of sunflowers. Now the biggest difference between ornamental and, and edible is edible sunflowers produce one head. Stock gets eight to 10 feet, one head, that's it. Now the ornamental sunflowers will multiple flower off of the stock and they won't be as tall. They might be five feet, six feet, but they bloom out of their leaf axles. So more flowers. So you gotta look at it if you're doing the edible, single flower for sunflower seeds, multiple flowers for bouquets and for um for um you know for flowering so that's those now i'm going to take this off the table let's take these down and then i'm going to talk more about perennials and then i'll talk about roses and then we'll go okay so now we got all the perennials coming in so shade 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 plants too like here you go here all the coleus are coming in this is the best time of year you're going to get different varieties of foliage color for the shade. So I love the coleus, because look at some of these colors. There'll be reds and oranges and pinky greens, so that's a cool one right there. Now you gotta watch the snails with this too, but again, Sluggo. Sluggo is the one I use for that. You have Heliotrope, another good one for shade. Then we move into some of the other perennials for sun. Here you go again with the, this is a really good variety of Coreopsis. This is one is, oh no, this is Bidens. So pretty and pink Bidens, great for the butterflies. Here's another little shade perennial called Hemizingia. That's a good one, sort of a Plectoranthus relative. Um, variegated Geranium, plant those right now. 
We're getting in a lot of euphorbias like the Ascot Rainbow. This is a good perennial for more of a drought tolerant garden. So good for the foliage color. Uh, Gerber daisies are coming in. Gerbers are great for containers. Sometimes they can be a little finicky about water in the ground, but I always put Gerbers in like a little terracotta pot on a patio that gets about six hours of sun. So Gerbers are easy to grow. Chocolate Cosmos. So the flowers smell like, like chocolate pudding. So if you guys ever grown, I'd smell it. Oh yeah, smell it, smell it. You gotta come over here and smell it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Chocolate Cosmos, we finally got them and sometimes they're hard, they're hard to grow, but that one, I love smelling the flowers on that one. <laughs> and um, then another perennial that I really like, I always talk about my favorites. And this is another one that's called Veronica, Veronica Spicata or Veronica Speedwell. These sometimes will get tall about two to three feet, as much as four feet tall. Purple spikes, white spikes, but the Veronicas are coming in. One of my favorite perennials, Veronica Spicata. Love that. Here's a pink one. Love that one. Great plant for, for sun and just blooming. Another one that I like is um, David's Choice, Little Artemisia. These are just cool for the foliage color. Very drought tolerant plant too. So I like that. Love those for the um, just hardy plants. And moving into more perennials, let's talk more about the, um, the, the difference. I'm gonna go over, I just wanna talk quickly about the difference between the hummingbird plants. I'm gonna put a bunch of them up here. Hummingbird versus butterflies in terms of what they like and what they're drawn for, for their food, for their habitat. So when you get into hummingbird plants, they like the long fluted flowers because the nectar is going to sit in the back, right? So that's important for them, long fluted. Um, so salvias, um, here's a whole bunch of them right here that I brought up. So the monkey flowers, which is actually a really cool uh, California native. So again, great for the hummingbird. Salvia gregii is great for the hummingbird. This is a new variety called cherry lips. It's more of a burgundy red. That's a good one. For the hummingbirds, the cruvias. They love the little cigar plants. Again, little skinny flowers, nectar sits in the back of the flower. So that's important for that stuff. That's the hummingbird. Now, when you go into the butterflies, butterflies like the fodder open flowers, like these yarrows, great for the butterflies. These um, Sierra sun drops, the, the, the Cali lophus, these do good in the desert too. And then you got more Coreopsis, open flowers. See those stamens? They can feed off the pollen on those stamens. And we are bringing in the, we're still bringing in a bunch of the milkweed. So if you want to draw the monarchs in your garden, this is the California native, Aslepsis fascularis. These will be slow until we get hotter. As we get hotter into June and July, they'll take off. Monarchs are going to start coming out as we get hotter. A lot, I've been getting a lot of questions like, where are the monarchs at? Where are the monarchs? We're still pretty cold right now. So once we hit 75 in the day and 60s at night, that's when it breaks open and you'll see them really munching on the narrow leaf milkweed or a sepsius. Got them in the little bag. So these are $16.99. So nice little plants. So come in and grab those. Um, what else we got? Oh, some of my other favorites. I love some of the verbenas. They're butterflies. So these are actually natives. This is native to um, Baja California, Verbena de Labina, and then this is this is a lilac variety. Let's see, this is a new one too. This one is called Pas, uh, Paseo Rancho. So three to four foot shrub, um, great little open flowers. Butterflies love them. So the Verbenas, great plants to use, attracting wildlife and butterflies. And so um, going on, um, we're do getting a lot of salvias too. You can still do the native sages. But sometimes it's very tough to plant some of the other natives this time of year because they're gonna go into their dormancy. So that's one thing that you watch for. Some natives, better to plant in winter, coincide with the winter rains. Other natives can be planted right now. It just depends on what they are, but come in and see us on that because they vary, you know. So get our recommendations on what's planting now because some of the true natives, I can be planted more in the winter, December, November. Okay, so that's, um, and one thing I want to touch on before we go, roses. So let me bring the rose over here. Let me move some of this stuff. I'm going to, I got so much stuff out here, huh? It's like I make a big mess, but I have fun doing it. So roses this time of year, let me come to the side. With our weather right now, let me turn it. 
They're getting powdery mildew really easy. So mildew, let me push this aside. So mildew happens when we have damp mornings and warmer afternoons. The powdery mildew takes off. And powdery mildew can really, it doesn't really attack the older growth, but it really can affect and really damage the new growth. So if you guys are fighting um, powdery mildew on tomatoes, on roses, I like to use sulfur sprays. Like I use, there's one by Safer. This is a good one right here. It's called Rose 3-in-1. So I like the sulfur sprays because one thing I always find with the sulfur sprays, you can spray them frequently and they're not gonna hurt the plant. The copper sprays you gotta watch out with as we get hotter. So, and always spray in the evening. Don't spray during the, the middle part of the day because if we get, the sun comes out and we get hot, you could burn the leaves. But that's why I spray it in the evening, sulfur or the rose three in one. And sometimes if they're bad, you might have to spray them once a week or if they're really bad, lightly cut them off. And then as we get warmer and we get more sun in the morning, the mildew won't be as bad. So that's important, even for rust. Like if you see rust working its way up the plant, strip those leaves off, spray the cane, spray the ground, and um, that way you'll keep the rust down a little bit. Because again, all these fungal problems are gonna be warm, warmer afternoons, but damp, cold mornings where the moisture sits on the leaf and doesn't dry out. So that's important for that. Spray if you have to, trim back, like lay some out for the rust, clean them, get the leaves off the ground, and for the mildew, lightly top them and keep spraying with the three in one, okay? And so what else was I gonna talk about? Oh, fertilizing the roses. If you haven't fed them, feed them. So like, like they're giggling, it's like, and so if, if last time you fed them should have been about in January, right? Feed them again. Now that we're rounding out into late May, now we're into June, feed them. Your organic rose fertilizer. What I do too, at least two, three times a year, I give them a little bit of Epsom salts and Epsom salts is a good source of magnesium. So magnesium, they do like, oh, I'm getting all hung up on the cord. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so magnesium, they do like, so give them about a half a handful per plant and make sure that you water good afterwards so it breaks down. So I throw in like a half a handful first. I put the fertilizer over it. I like my tools, like this is a good little weeder, but this is good for scratching. I always turn it over and I work the fertilizer in around it so I can weed it out, pull out the weeds, and then lightly work the fertilizer in the first inch or two inches of the soil. So that's important always, because that's how the organics break down. They break down when they're mixed lightly into the soil and the water starts to break them down as it soaks in, so that's important. And um, touching on a few things, because I know we're almost finished. Um, fruit trees right now, I really didn't, I haven't, I didn't really talk anything about the fruit trees, but just fertilize them. With blueberries, feed them, acid fertilizers. The regular, uh, the fruit trees like your peaches, your plums, your nectarines, feed them with an all purpose. If you have citrus, now is a good time to feed your citrus again with the citrus food. So that's one, I like this because this has your iron, your magnesium, and your zinc in here. So very important for avocados and citrus. So if you haven't fed them in a couple months, feed them again. And another thing that I will, I will emphasize when fruit trees are carrying a lot of fruit, don't feed them because you don't want to overfeed them if they're holding a lot of fruit because they could drop the fruit. So feed them before the fruit starts getting bigger. So that's important too. If they're, if they've set a lot of big fruit and they're like, especially with oranges and lemons, don't feed them. Wait until they're done harvesting and then feed them. And I usually feed citrus all the way up to about September and that's it. I don't go into the fall. So I start as early as January late as September and then that's it and so now um, I'm pretty much finished with everything um, for even another thing that I'll talk about quick is um, with um, with fertilizing the compost teas are good to use because you'll get some nutrients out of the compost tea if you guys are running into any uh, grub problems or insect problems I do like the uh, beneficial nematodes. So we're starting to carry these now. And so if you have a lot of white grubs in your soil, this is a ready to use beneficial nematode. You sprinkle it in the ground and water good afterward. And these will actually go after the June, the June beetle larvae and the Japanese beetle larvae. So good to use. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, you guys can ask me questions now. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah. Thanks, David. Thank so you. we do have a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, we had one guest who was wondering what the best pesticide would be to use for um, bugs eating her basil in the garden. See, that's snails and slugs. Sluggo. So sluggo, because the one thing, you'll always, well, the two things that are going to eat, caterpillars can eat the leaves too, but if you have holes in the middle of the leaf, if you look at the whole leaf, if you have perfect holes in the middle, bigger holes, it's snails, sluggo. If the leaf look like, more, if the damage looks more jagged, then use um, Captain Jack's, like a spinosad or an organic um, spray like BT. Okay, awesome. And then we did have another question about when is the best time to repot roses that are in pots? They're asking what's the best time to repot roses. Well, you can really repot them anytime. I tend to like to repot them um, as, when they're growing, like when they're actively growing. Um, I'll repot them now before we get hot. So that's one thing that I do. I know a lot of people don't like to replant them when they're carrying a lot of flowers, but I'm a, I'm a stickler about liking to plant stuff before we go into hot weather. So I'll replant them now because sometimes when you're going into July and August, that's a harder time to plant them because we're going to be hotter. So I like to plant, replant them in spring or even right now before we really go into summer. And then we did have one final question. Um, someone who wants to plant complementary plants with tomatoes. Oh, well, you know what? Like when you get into, um, there's a lot of plants that can be complementary with tomatoes and a lot of them are what they call um, um, companion planting. Companion planting, there's a really good book. If you've never seen it, they'll have it at Barnes and Noble. It's called Carrots Love Tomatoes. So that's a good little book if you guys ever read it. but. Uh, some of the companion plantings I know, basil is a good one because basil will keep away the, the caterpillars. They'll, a lot of times the moths and the butterflies will smell the basil and they'll stay away from it. One of the other main ones that I can always think of is the, is the marigolds. So marigolds, um, they don't like, a lot of the caterpillars don't like marigolds. So companion planting, basil, marigolds, nasturtiums, carrots, there's a whole bunch of them. But the two that always come to mind are sweet basil and and marigolds yeah okay okay i think that's everything okay cool okay this is david rizzo from rogers gardens thank you for joining me today and don't forget to follow us on instagram and facebook and if you guys have any questions about stuff bring in you know come in and talk to me i'm here i'm usually here saturday through wednesday okay thank you guys happy gardening